John, I think, you know, you're really inspiring. You really are. I think a lot of people who want to get out and get on the road full time, you know, some people are a little bit older, you know, mm -hmm. they're in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, if I'm not being too forward, how old you are? Yes, I'm 79. I'll be 80 this year. No kidding. Yeah, and uh, I've got a, uh, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but I've, uh, I've got one knee that's a total replacement, and I've got another one I wear a brace on most of the time, and it gets, uh, it gets me by. Um, uh, normal aches and pains. Uh, <laughs> have a uh, have a little bit of a heart problem that I control with medication, and but I don't let that slow me down. Uh, I realize I've lived longer than I'm going to live, and if I'm going to do these things, now is the time. I got to do it now. I love it. Uh, you know, there's 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 no guarantee That's for right. tomorrow, and um, uh, so that's that's my outlook on it. So what what advice? So I, let's say you have somebody who's in their late sixties who's always wanted to travel but thinks mm -hmm. they're too old. What advice do you have for them? Well, uh, you know, if you if you don't give it a try, you're never going to know. The longest part of a journey begins with the first step. That's right. You know, and um, if you really want to do it, if you really want to do it, then go for it. Because if you don't, you're always going to wonder or think, you know, what did I miss? Yeah. You know, why didn't I take that chance? Right. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, if you feel you can afford it, uh, go for it. There are a couple times I wound up in the hospital traveling. And uh, there's hospitals everywhere. There are doctors everywhere. That's right. And uh, don't don't let that don't let that slow you down. How do you manage your health care? How do you manage your prescriptions? How do you do those things? I um, for prescriptions, <laughs> I I start out like this particular uh, this particular trip. I started out with about uh, not a ninety day supply of medication, and there are four that I take, uh, and I kind of gauge where I might be at a certain time and I'll contact the pharmacy and have them uh, mail the prescriptions to me at the location I'm going to be at. That's awesome. Um, I have to have my blood checked every month. The VA does that. Uh, and of course the VA is federal so you're it's across the country. Yes, right. And But you don't just walk in. Right. Uh, the VA now have what they call uh, veteran uh, traveling veteran coordinators and you contact them and you tell them where you're going to be and they set up an appointment for you at that location and uh, it works pretty good works works real well that's so, great yeah yeah i um uh, I, I really have no fears about, uh, about tra I enjoy it. I enjoy meeting people and, and of course, the scenery. And, yeah, nice. and uh, uh, so, yeah, I just, I, I guess I throw caution to the wind sometimes. And, and uh, but. Sometimes we have to do that. Yeah, though, yeah, you know? sure. I mean, I think we're only given this one life. That's and right. So, I think if we if we're sitting on the couch watching the, another football game, you know, eating chips and salsa, and you know maybe having an occasional, you know, friend over here and there. I mean, I guess you have to gauge what your quality of life is yes. and what quality of life you want. Yes. If you want a quality of life that allows you to see the country, allows you freedom, you know, and is within the context of your current financial situation then that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You need to get out and about. And mm -hmm. I think you're you're a true testament to that. You know, and it's it's quite impressive actually and there inspiring. Are, there are I've uh, I've seen uh, I've seen others that uh, do it on a real shoestring. Yep. Me too. And uh, they will uh, if they run out of funds somehow they they find a way to pick up a little part-time work or uh, uh, there may be some social services that lend a hand, uh, uh, you know, until they get their next right uh, paycheck or or um, or social security check. You know, I, I watch a uh, a couple of, uh, called uh, B and D um, Adventures. I think that's what it is. But 
It's this um, older retired couple. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he says is, you know, if we need to have extra money for a repair or if we're if we're a little short every, on a month, we just stay put. We yeah. stay parked until the money comes in. Right. And then we get whatever we need to fix fixed and then we move on. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good it's a good outlook. Yeah. I'm sure it works. Tell me about your family, John. How do they feel about you traveling? Well, there's uh, <laughs> the family is almost non-existent now. And uh, I have some cousins, and uh, I guess they think I'm probably crazy. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they're always glad to hear from me. I've got a number of friends on the Internet that are retired. Some are, most are retired, some are not. Yeah. And uh, so I try to write little, uh, little emails to them and send yeah. them pictures from time yeah. to time. And they, uh, some want to live vicariously through what I'm doing. Sure. But, but uh, uh, they enjoy it. Now, are you on Facebook? Yes. So you're, you're active in social media. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time there. Right. But yes, I am. Uh -huh. So I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to get your Facebook connection okay. so I can share this video on oh. your Facebook page okay so that way your friends can see it sure and sure. I know I know you watch YouTube and hopefully you're gonna be one of my newest subscribers you bet so you bet well John I I can't say thank you enough this has been a, an amazing interview today we've talked about finances we've talked about motivation and the reason to do it we've talked about health care uh, we've talked about you know your rig I'm really interested in seeing your rig Sure, we'll so, do it. Can we do that? Sure, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh-huh, you okay. bet. Yeah, we'll go around and take a look. I'll close up the back and then I'll open it for you as... Uh... Okay. Okay, John, so I'm noticing that this is high voltage. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just a little something I put on there to maybe deter... Uh, someone from uh, confiscating what I might have. Yeah, now so when you park this, people I suspect assume that it's just a, just a cargo trailer. Yes, uh-huh, that's right. They, they don't know if you've got a motorcycle in there, you're taken out to uh, Sturgis uh, for a rally, or if, you, if you're in the lawnmower repair business and you've got lawnmowers in there, Wow. Um, so you you retrofitted this whole thing? Yeah. Uh huh. I even uh, <laughs> this year I I ordered these decals and put on just just for something to do. Yeah, it looks nice. And you ran your power. So what are you? What um, are you? 110 volt? Uh, this is uh, yeah, it's 30 amps. Okay, 30 amp. 30 amps. These boxes are. Uh, 20, 30, and 50. Yep. And I run on 30. Okay. Amps. And uh, of course, I don't have water inside. Okay. Uh, so I, I just, uh, I have the hose over here. And, um, I, you know, if I need water for cleaning or something, this is my, um, this is my dishwashing machine. <laughs> Nice little portable grill. Little portable grill. Got and lighting. Yeah. This is my uh, this is my uh, little toy for running around. Oh. Um, little scooter. I've had this for about uh, six years. And how's that working out for you? Oh, it's fine. It's, it'll go about 13 miles. Good. Without a charge and uh, and. Uh, It'll do, I think, about 12 to 15 miles an hour. And so you just plug in right here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Plug in right here. Now this is... Uh, I don't want to shock everyone. This, this is going to look like a storage trailer when we walk in. But uh, I have to utilize 6 feet by 12 as best I can. Yes. And... Um, Come on in, Patrick, if you can make it. Oh, wow. Uh, I've got two refrigerators. Okay. And uh, just storage down here. Bought a new pot 
<laughs> water. Um, got some things stored over here. I'll turn on this light back here for you. I've got it. Uh, I've got this back window. Uh, oh, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, we didn't open up the back yet, did we? No, not no, yet. Oh, we'll have to show. Anyhow, here's my bed, and this is about an eighteen dollar air mattress from Walmart. This air conditioner, air conditioner over here is a five thousand BTU. You can buy them now at Walmart for about one hundred and twelve dollars. Wow. <laughs> Here was my simple electric system a friend of mine helped me with. Goes all the way up. This is really amazing. Here's the porta potty I mentioned. Real simple, uh, real simple to use. Mm -hmm. That's great. I even brought a little vacuum cleaner along. And then you got your TV. Got my TV and my uh, DVD player. I got some clothes stored up here. A little BB gun. <laughs> and the the AC is on right now, and I'll tell you, it it really cools this trailer it feels, down. It feels really, it really good in here. Really cools it down. And I have a small, I have a very small electric heater there in the corner, and in in very cold weather. That will blast you out of here. I'm sure. I just got the microwave about three or four days ago, and I have a convection oven that right now is sitting over in the uh, uh, campgrounds uh, community room. We're going to fix some pizzas in there after a while. And you got a nice air freshener, which smells good air in here. Air freshener, yeah. I yeah. love your window here. And so now you've got you've got uh, you've got a um... yeah. What I did I, this is just a this is just a uh, uh, one of those sun blockers you use in your vehicle to block the sun. Right. And uh, this is a window that I bought used for nine dollars five years ago <laughs> and i'll open up the back if you if yeah if you do you think have you seen pretty much what we've got in here absolutely all right let's uh let's and go out here you know it's funny because it doesn't feel too it doesn't feel too little i get along fine in it and, and you're pretty tall john how tall are you six two so six two yeah but when you open this up what I did, oh wow! I just I got two sheets of plywood, and I built this I built this wall, set it back, cut out for the window, put the window in. I've got a chair here, got a table behind it. Um, love it. Here's uh, here's a TV antenna. Wow. Got a couple bath sponges hanging there. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> And then there's um, your air conditioner. And there's my air conditioner. Now nobody would even know. Nobody. No. Has anybody ever knocked on your door in the middle of the night when you're boondocking? Never have. <laughs> Never have. That's great. No. So how long will you be doing this, John? This is a great. Uh, well, this, this is a great rig. This, this trip, um, I'm going to leave hopefully this this Tuesday morning. And I want to make my way up to Memphis. I'd like to see the um, the pyramid up there that uh, Bass Pro now has yes. a business in. Uh, then I'll, I'll uh, keep heading north and west. I'm thinking Springfield, Missouri next, then St. Joe, Missouri, and then I'll cut west over into Nebraska. Wow. And uh, western Nebraska is always... I don't know. There's something about Western Nebraska that I like, yep. and then of course you've got Wyoming, the Tetons, Yellowstone, and then you've got Montana. Wow. And, uh, you Man. know, and then Northern Idaho. You're living the life, John. Oh. You're living the oh, life, my friend. I, I love it. I love it. Well, can I say thank you so much yes, for sharing sir. time with me today, yes, buddy? Yes, sir. You bet. It's been you a pleasure. I'll, yes, Patrick. I'll, I'll get this posted up on my channel, and then I'll share it to your Facebook page. Okay. And uh, guys, if you get a chance, put some comments down and let John know what you think, man. 
Okay. Thanks, John. Uh huh. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed this interview with John. Um, what an inspiring RVer. Uh, what an inspiring guy overall. You know, his um, philosophy on life is get out there and do it. And, you know, if nothing else, I wonder if, you know, this makes people who watch the video wonder what they're doing with their lives and why they're waiting. Um, you know, the RV lifestyle is amazing. And I think people acclimate to what's more comfortable or what's most comfortable for them in how this lifestyle serves their needs. And in John's case, you know, he lived uh, in the fifth wheel and drug it all over the country. And this cargo trailer that he has is absolutely amazing. Uh, I almost thought, you know, I think I could do that. And for people like Devin and some other folks that I know who are looking to get out there, this may be a really perfect option because nobody would ever know that there was somebody living in that trailer, ever. You could park at Walmart, you could park on the street, you could park at Lowe's, nobody would ever know. And he, after the interview, uh, of course I thanked him, but after the interview we continued to talk and um, some of the plans that he has, you know, at almost 80 years old is, is unbelievable and actually kind of makes me kick myself in the butt and say, you know, what am I doing? So anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up, please. Um, look forward to your comments, and I will definitely share them with him. He will not be here at the park much longer. He's headed out uh, west, as he said. But um, thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And thanks again, John. It was great to interview you. Have a great day, everybody.